Today on BRS TV Investigates, are those screen net tops blocking all your precious light? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of BRS TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing with a focus on putting them to the test. Then rate that theory based on our scale of reef fantasy to reef certainty. This week we're challenging the theory, screen net tops don't block appreciable amounts of light. Most reefers care about this kind of thing because we spend a fortune on our lights and no one wants to drastically decrease the amount of light entering the tank, or at least we certainly want to know what we're doing when we place one of these screens on top of the tank. I think this is one of the major reasons why very few reefers use glass tops on their tank. The glass reflects a lot of light and gets dirty quickly, which further impacts light penetration. The screen at top was a workaround designed to keep the fish in the tank, but block a limited amount of light. It absolutely keeps the fish in and visually doesn't seem to block a lot of light, so it's become a pretty popular solution. Today we're going to test two types of light on the screen, a wide T5 array with an 8 bulb T5 and a more compact light source with the Radeon G4 Pro. We selected both light sources to make sure this data applies to a majority of the people watching today's video. We also tested at three depths of 18, 12 and 6 inches deep within a 30 inch cube. I think we're going to be able to identify not just the light lost, but also where it's happening. On top of that, we're also going to test the eighth inch netting against the fourth inch netting. Presumably, there's about twice as much material with the eighth inch grid and it will block twice as much light. Likely why we sell four to one quarter inch netting over eighth inch netting. Before we get too far into this, I thought we should actually measure the amount of area the screen is covering by measuring the thickness of the netting as well as the space between the grid of squares. At first glance, it might seem like the netting is covering a large portion of the tank, particularly the eighth inch grid, but it's not as much as you might think. On the quarter inch grid, the netting is 0.27 millimeters thick and the space between the squares is 6.68 millimeters, which means the netting is covering about 4% of the tank and 96% is the air space between the grid. Based on that data alone, I guess I'd expect to see about a 4% reduction in light from adding the screen net top to the tank. On the eighth inch grid, the netting is only 0.16 millimeters thick and the space between is 3.55 millimeters, which means the netting is covering about 4.5% of the area above the tank. So even though the grid on the eighth inch netting is much tighter, most of us honestly never even considered the netting might be thinner. So I guess this was kind of a surprise and ultimately there might not be as big of a difference between the two nettings as one might think. Looking at a first set of data at a depth of six inches with the ATI T5 fixture, the average loss of par with the quarter inch netting was 5.8% and pretty close to the coverage number of 4% we calculated. However, what was surprising to most of the team was the eighth inch netting was almost exactly the same at 5.9% loss. Overall, we're talking about a loss of 10 par, which is almost meaningless. Nothing in the tank is going to experience a noticeable difference between 150 and 160 par. Looking at how the PAR loss was distributed between the center and outside edges of the tank, there was also limited difference with the averages within a few points of each other. At a depth of 12 inches, the PAR reduction was basically the same with 4% for the quarter inch and 4.9% for the eighth inch, and the center to outside ring measurements within a few points of each other. Same thing at 18 inches deep in the tank, quarter inch with a 5.5% loss of PAR, and the eighth inch with only 5%. So at this depth, somehow the eighth inch actually performed slightly better. Moving on to the more compact light source with the Radeon G4 Pro, we essentially saw the same results. However, the Radeon seemed to be able to penetrate the screen even better than the T5 lights. Particularly with a quarter inch netting at a depth of six inches, the Radeon only saw a loss of 2.9% and 5.6% with the eighth inch. At a depth of 12 inches, that trend continues with only 3.7% with the quarter inch and 5.6% with the eighth inch, and at 18 inches deep, 4.8 and 6% respectively. Again, for the most part, various areas of the tank within a few percentage points of each other. So all in all, I think the testing results match pretty closely with the amount of actual area the screen is covering, and the small deviation might be because of the corners of the netting are thicker than other areas. So we're going to rate this theory of screen net tops don't block appreciable amounts of light a 9 out of 10, because the word appreciable is open to interpretation by the individual, but they certainly block very little light and in the range that most people would assume, or in many cases likely less. 
So what does this mean to reefers? Well, I think we can use this tool to protect our fish without a lot of concern and how it impacts lighting on our reef tanks, and apparently even more so if you use popular LEDs like the Radeon or likely similar form factors like the AI Hydras. On top of that, to our surprise, you can use either the eighth inch or quarter inch with basically the same results and make the selection based on your fish size rather than being concerned about how it impacts light. The DIY screen net top project has not been just fun, but a valuable tool for a lot of reefers. We invite you to join the larger conversation on this project on our Reef to Reef thread. Share your picks on how yours turned out, tips on how to make yours easier or better, or even ideas on how to improve the entire project. The direct link to the thread is pinned in the comments area down below. I'll share one I heard not too long ago, which is to use a hair dryer to heat the netting when you're done, which will shrink up the slack and removes many of the wrinkles. If you're careful to not melt the netting, this is an awesome trick. That wraps up today's BRS TV Investigates. Don't forget that testing what you want to know is what this is all about. So share with us in the community what it is you want us to explore in the comments and give us a quick thumbs up and subscribe if you like what we're doing. Behind the scenes this week we're setting up a longer term test using marine pure ceramic blocks. A lot of reefers claim that the unique pore structures these blocks have is producing anaerobic areas in the tank and processing nitrate into nitrogen gas, which would be an ultra easy way to maintain a low nitrogen nitrate system. We're putting this to the test and we'll share the results with you in a couple months when the test is complete. See you next week with another BRS TV Investigates.